Three questions Christians avoid but destroy African culture. Africa is already the largest Christian continent but has the poorest religious people. This is a very serious uh, matter indeed which we must uh, consider. Over religious Africans, Africa is already uh, the largest co Christian continent on earth today with slightly more Christians than North America, but by 2050, North America are less Christians than Africa. You can uh, find that uh, these details on this website. Clear that this way of ideology based on religious uh, ideology uh, thrives by creating social uh, conditions uh, like tribalism, uh, divisions, and poverty which is one reason why Christianity and Islam are spreading across the whole of Africa. This is the map showing uh, that Islam is dominating over the north. It has even crept up to Mozambique here. Up to, it is in Malawi, of course, but it has crept up to Mozambique here. And that traditional African religions have all been uh, usurped and have all been wiped out. What's going on? What's the problem? Let us be a thoughtful relook at this uh, issue quite clearly because we are the civilizers of the earth. We built great and massive buildings like uh, Great Zimbabwe. Building such structures shows that we are a people that were intelligent, that were smart, that were connected to other powers and other forces beyond uh, this earth. Christians or Muslims using uh, their Bible or Quran have not benefited even a single black person in Africa. Is this a true or false? Do you have the facts? Yet African traditional religion was foundational to all these glories that we are pointing out today from Egypt to all over the world, to ancient uh, India, to uh, China, to America, to Europe. It was African traditional religion that was thriving, that was driving this understanding, this uh, development and the civilization, the most peaceful civilization ever. None of the Abrahamic religions have acknowledged this. Why? Why should we promote them anyway? Here are the cardinal questions that we, all, that we know Christians avoid and by all means run away from. Who and what is God? Is this God? Yes, to billions of Christians and millions of Christians, this is God. If the Christian God is good and loving, why is he not assisting black people? These are his symbols, the Christian God, the cross, uh, the star of David, and also the crescent. And many others, Africans adopted many of these, but it has availed to nothing. And this is the Christian God, the so-called creator, and his angels, and the earth, and his golden uh, uh, robe. Is Jesus God? Where is the proof in the Bible that Jesus is God? Where he said he's God? If there's no proof in the Bible, whose God do Christians worship? And what has he done for us? Before that, we know that Africans formulated the concept about the creator now called God by others. They formulated this thousands and thousands of years ago. So who and what is God? Popular terms for the creator that are found in Africa. Katonda. The name by which the Baganda of Uganda called the supreme being, it means creator or originator. Kazoba, the name of God used by some African people such as the Bazinza of Tanzania, Panyankore and the Baganda of Uganda, the name means the sun, which is used here metaphorically to mean the supreme being. Kibuka, the divinity of war in the Baganda, pantheons of God. Kiwanuka, the divinity of thunder, lightning and fertility in the Baganda, pantheon of God. Koth, the name used by the Nua of Sudan to express their concept of the supreme being, it means a spirit. Kayala, the name of the supreme being among the Nyakusa of Tanzania, it means the owner of all things. The name of the supreme being among the men of Sierra Leone is Leve. Leza is the primary name used by the Ambo and the Baila of Zambia to express their concept of the supreme being, it means creator. Lubabe, the pantheon of Baganda, religion of Uganda, Katonda, the Baga, it, it means creator, plural of Lubale. Mabe, the name by which the Bulu 
people of Cameroon call the supreme being, it means the one who bears the world. Makumba is a Brazilian version of the Yoruba religion. Mukasa, the divinity of fertility, health, wealth, and a general welfare. Modimo. Modimo, the name of the supreme being among the Swana, a people of Botswana in Southern Africa. It means greatest ancestral spirit. That's why Hamid Hebrew ethics says God is an ancestral deity, is our ancestral God. Creator. Mulungu is also another term. Gogo, ethnic at group of Tanzania, use that. Chewa, ethnic group of Malawi, use that. Musisi, the divinity in charge of earthquakes in Baganda. Musoke, the rainbow spirit. Mveriman, the name of the supreme being among the Swazi, the Zulu, the Shangans, the Ndebeles of Africa, of ancient Africa. It means the one who appeared first. Mwari, the name of the supreme being among the Shona people of Zimbabwe. Nanabuluku, the name used by the Fion people of Benin to express the idea of the supreme being as the creator. Ngai, the name of God used by the Kukuyu and Akamba ethnic groups of Kenya. It is also used by the Maasai who live both in Kenya and Tanzania. The name means the creator, the divider, the benefactor, the possessor of brightness. Ngai is also shown for lighting, for light. Nyambi, the name of the supreme being and creator of everything among the Barotse people of Zambia. Their concept of the supreme being is distinguished by their belief that Nyambi had a wife whose name is Naslele. It's clear. Nyame, the name of the creator of the supreme being among the Ashanti of Ghana, it means shining one. We know Ngai, Nzambi, the name of the uh, by which the Vili people of the Congo know the supreme being, it means creator and ultimate source of power. So who and what is God? Is the creator is everything. That's how our ancient African ancestors explained it. Number two question. What benefits have black people received from Christianity? It is clear that Christianity reigned on black people, Atlantic slave trade and colonization, mental and resource uh, uh, acquisition. This is how people were converted to be Christians. Of course, this is how they were indoctrinated to be Christians under uh, Christianity. Today, the majority of African uh, Christians are being mentally conditioned to hold the view that uh, the issue of slave trade and the connivance of Western missionaries have been over-exaggerated. There is a prominent preacher who said, there is no evidence that the alliance between missionaries and colonialism was ever comprehensive in Africa. Is that thinking, is that mental right, is that being correct? This is what Christianity has given. These are the benefits of Christianity over the Africans. Atlantic slave trade, colonization, the Hamitic case, wrong teachings on totems, wrong teachings on ancestor, murder, rape, racism, destruction of our culture, abuse of our ancestors, colonization. Did Christianity uh, Chris destroy African culture? Yes, you bet it did. Culture involves language, housing, health, technical skills, economics, morality, and social norms, laws, religion, and spirituality. Christianity has induced amnesia on all of these topics, on all of these issues and ideologies of life. The transatlantic slave trade not only distorted Africa's economic development, it also distorted views of the history and importance of the African continent itself. Our African civilizations and achievements are downplayed in churches. Most of the Christians do this. They kill and destroy each other. They, they, the Christianity divides us into pieces, into units. Christianity is the one that divided Africa using the Benin Conference into many small fragmenting, fighting, small little continents. In Cameroon today, they are fighting. They are being destroyed because of Christianity. In Ghana, in Nigeria, in Zimbabwe, in Africa, there are divisions everywhere. Amongst uh, tribes, amongst people that should be united. What's the problem? It is because the minds of black people have been so inundated by fraudulent, negative, racial, devaluing disinformation about ourselves from totally white sources, especially driven by churches and Christianity, that many blacks literally finds it easier to believe uh, that there is something inherently wrong with their race rather than to accept that they have been lied to. It's a psychological warfare program. It's a spiritual warfare instigated 
by Christianity, instigated by an interpretation of the Bible that dominates us today via Christianity. Christian leaders justified slavery. This is also a benefit. This is what we have been given as Africans. Slavery justification. The head of all Christian churches, the Pope, said that your ancestors were infidels with no souls. And it was the white man's uh, Christian's duty to enslave them and teach them about Jesus Christ, a white Jesus, whether black or yellow or what. But in slavery, Christians built churches over the top of the slave dungeons where Africans were shackled. They then took symbols and all that and imprisoned them so that they can control the soul. This is how they did it. They banned all our knowledge system and destroyed all our functional and systematic paradigms and tools and implements and ideologies by putting in us thoughts and ideas that causes doubt to our own achievements from ancient Hemet to Mapungu, Mapungubre to West Africa, so-called Western West Africa, which was Western Sudan in ancient times to East Africa, and also created a mind that doesn't believe in its history. Christianity is the greater sheku the greater rape of the black mind than slavery ever was, Barbara Hillary. That's what she said. How then do you follow a biblical view that denigrates your soul? That's what we benefit. Did we benefit from Christianity? No. The Atlantic slave trade was the largest forced migration in world history. It all began with a papal bull, Romina's Pontifex, issued in 1452 by Pope Nicholas uh, V, who gave Portugal a monopoly of slavery from Africa and the slave trade. The first extensive shipment of black Africans that would uh, later become known as the transatlantic slave trade was initiated at the request of Bishop Las Casas and authorized by Charles V in 1517. Ironically, the Catholic missionaries, such as the Jesuits, also owned slaves. Amazingly, Catholic bishop would publicly condemn slavery but privately allowed it to continue in colonies that economically enriched the church. Ask any Christian, did Christianity destroy African culture? What did we benefit from Christianity? They won't be able to explain. Culture involves spirituality, language, housing, healing, technical skills, economics, morality, social norms, laws, and religion. Christianity destroyed that. Is African traditional religion demonic? Christians will say yes. That's how they have been programmed. It's a shame. It's really a shame. So here's the question. Is the Christian a Bible uh, and God unbiased? The Christian God loves every race equally. You bet he doesn't. So it's divisive. So it's, it's, it's so racial. It's biased. It's, it's, it's not the right one. Traditions. From their oral culture, from our oral culture, we learned that are things as they are because we left the law, we left the rules and regulations. Who the Bible does not teach the Christian Christian does not know who is Israel. The Christians do not know whether they should eat meat or not, or should become vegan, or which 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 animals do they should they eat, which ones should they not eat. Why are you being saved? They don't explain that. They are told they are saved to go to heaven. What for? Why? To, to, to sing and praise a, a, a date. So that we have been joked. Why do we think we are going to heaven? The people that brings this ideology grabs our earth, grabs our oil. Christians are not allowed to think like that. Christians are not allowed to know who is Israel, to know should they eat meat, to know why they are being saved, to know what, why they are speaking in tongues. They are not allowed to think like that. Since God is a borrowed concept, to clearly interpret the Bible, why are Christians prohibited from reading other sacred sources like the African Book of Coming Forth by Day? Because there is a reason. Is it a divine a revelation or plagiarism? That's what they are supposed to know. The God concept is an African concept. Our Proverbs, the new people of West Africa express their uh, God's being without end in Proverbs. God will outlive eternity. This is the, the bronze uh, mask of a leopard. The leopard, like the lion, symbolizes ritual power. The leopard is also a symbol of royalty. For example, the leopard represents the spiritual aspect of the kingdom of Benin in Nigeria. 
This is what we did magic in Africa. This is Great Zimbabwe. This is a section of Great Zimbabwe, massive stone ruins, which dates back to thousands and thousands of years ago. So this is what Christianity is not allowed to know. Now, before they called us thugs, we were kings, queens, alchemists, master teachers, keepers of a sacred knowledge, midwives, shamans, and herbalists. Why is ancient Egypt denigrated in the Bible and the Quran? Because once you understand ancient Africa and its daughter civilization, ancient Egypt, their cookie crumbles. The deception crumbles. Here's what one of their uh, philosophers said. Cicero, to be ignorant of what occurred before you were born is to remain always a child. What is the worthy of human life unless it is woven into the life of our ancestors by the records of history? So they don't teach us African history. They say Egypt is Europe. They say Egyptians were civilized by aliens when the evidence comes, which is a lie. Their plan was to deceive. The plan is uh, to deceive. Since it is clear uh, that uh, persecution by missionaries is how many of uh, the earliest African civilization came about, we also must operate by teaching all who dare to listen that our way is the ancient way. The colonizing missionaries prevented the Shona people of modern day Zimbabwe to practice their spirituality and our spirituality. They desecrated shrines located in Matojeni and many other places. They harassed the Shona priests and decried Mari, the Shona creator, as being a fake and inept god. This persecution continued until the Shona were completely prevented from worshipping their god Mari at Matojen. Let us reverse uh, this from today. When will Africa and Africans be free from mental, spiritual, cultural and physical genocide of Christianity and Islam? That is the real question, especially for black Africans. We need to ask this and find answers to this it begins now, it begins at today, driving into the future. Conclusion. To understand the Bible is dual, interpretational and historical. Yes, interpretation using keys of African mythology from the book of Coming Forth by Day. It is obvious that historical, we have been abused by it. Are you are the chosen one? Are you a chosen? Your unique understanding is a sign and is your call. Hereditary Africa that created the incredible black civilization of ancient Egypt, ancient sororities, established some ethics that preserved certain primal knowledge. The use of laws was prerogative of a few. In this creation is one such primary knowledge process. Ancient shrewd sages used oral traditions and scribal ciphers to pass on these ideologies. Hamiti Hebrew ethics conveys ancient knowledge. Without reservation, the next generation of sages will lead the way for black Africans know within themselves what Hamiti Hebrew ethics is doing this time of today. You may be the now of this preparation in this primary knowledge. If you know the time, we say, welcome home, get involved, and let us walk uh, this walk, this way together, the Asian way. Conduct details are given only to the select a few. Thank you very much. A priest teacher, a rabbi, LM Tumizul. Life spirit of a man, Hamid Hebrew ethics. Time to rebuild and time to move forward by going backwards. Join us today. Subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Goodbye.